today we're going to start to make Tracer's armor. So we're going to be doing this a little bit differently than I've ever done armor before, but I feel like it's going to work. <laughs> I say that about everything. It's going to work! So this is the foam we're using. I have two different thicknesses. I have inch and half inch. So this foam is either called N95 or N55 is what I got. It's kind of like upholstery foam. It's very squishy. Kind of squish, squish. I can really bend and manipulate it. But it's not super dense and it's not super squishy it's right in the middle it's a really nice foam and we're gonna be making this for armor because you can easily cut it you can bend it into shapes it comes in a variety of thicknesses so you can do different armor things and I just feel like this is gonna work so this size of one inch foam this was nine dollars the one inch was just a scrap they had lying around so I just bought that size this is half of a full sheet, and in the half inch, this was $6. So I'm starting with the one inch foam to make the arm bracers, and this is my pattern. It takes four of these pieces to make the cylinder that's gonna go around my arm, so I'm gonna cut out eight total pieces for the two arm bracers. Now to cut this foam, I recommend using razor blades. Of course, these are very dangerous. It's just a blade. They're very sharp. They're slippery in your hands. So if you don't have very much experience, please don't cut yourself. If you have a dull razor blade or a dull X-Acto knife, it's not gonna go over well. You put a new blade in those and then we're gonna get started. Another quick thing I wanna mention before I get started is you're gonna see me using this 74 spray glue to glue the foam pieces together. Um, I really like this. It works really quickly. It's really easy and it holds foam really well. It's for foam. It's called Foam Fast. These are $27 a piece. I love it. I think it's worth it for time and efficiency and it holds really well. But you can absolutely use contact cement or another adhesive, but I cannot promise you it will hold as well as this because this stuff is permanent. And that's another reason why I love it. So I sprayed the edges of each of the pieces and I let them dry for about five minutes until the glue was tacky but doesn't come off the foam when I touch it. And then all you have to do is touch the pieces together and they form a permanent bond. Once all four are stuck together, you should get a cylinder shape. Now most likely on your first try, it is not gonna fit your arm perfectly. So what I had to do was go back and just take a razor blade again and cut out little pieces of the foam and glue it back together until it fit me. Another good thing about using the spray glue is that you can easily cut through it. Once the bracer fits your arm, we can move on to that top fin piece. So that fin is pretty thick on her armband, so I am using two pieces of the inch foam and sticking them together for each arm. So I'm gonna need to cut out four of these pieces of my pattern. I then sprayed two of the pieces together and used a razor blade to smooth out the curves. Okay, right here, I sprayed both the foam fin to the foam armband, but I'm gonna recommend you keep them separate to cover each piece with Warbler because it's gonna be a lot easier than what I had to do with them connected. So on its own, this foam is too porous to be able to paint, so you really can't leave it just like this for armor purposes. You need to be able to cover it with something, whether that be paper mache, a thermoplastic, normal craft foam. You can cover it with whatever you want, so that way later on you're able to paint it and make it look like armor. I am choosing to cover mine with black warbler. So my method to do this was to use those same pattern pieces that I cut out of foam, cut them out of the warbler, and then just heat the warbler up and place it over the foam. You know, you know, seam the warbler together and cover the whole thing with my thermoplastic. And a side note, if you are using a thermoplastic with a heat gun, this foam does melt with heat. So you need to heat up your warbler apart from your foam and then place it on your foam and then shape it down there. And I have used my heat gun on a very low setting to he reheat up the warbler on top of this foam, but I was extremely careful and I did end up melting some spots, so use extreme caution. Once that was done, I decided to take the Plasti Dip root of priming my piece, 
So Plastic Dip is a thick plastic-like spray paint and it fills in the texture of the warbler really nicely as well as fills in the little holes that might have happened in between when you were piecing the warbler pieces together. And even though my Plastic Dip was white and matched the color of her armor, I went over the whole thing with a gloss white spray paint to make it look perfect. As for the detailing, I did it all 100% with acrylic paint. Alright, I know this isn't the arm bracer, but I used the same paint techniques for the entire armor set. So I'm mainly using a warm chocolate brown and a really fluffy brush to age the tops of this armor. So the technique is to get a little bit of paint on your brush, wipe the majority of it off on a paper towel, and then slowly drag the brush across the surface of the armor. And then before it dries, you want to take a paper towel, or your fingers, because I use my fingers a lot too, let's be honest, and wipe it off. And then repeat that process even over the same areas until you've built up enough dirt and age to your liking. Now I'm taking a really fine brush and just really adding in the details. I look at reference pictures of her armor and really just darken the armor where it needs to be. Also, don't forget to add dirt and aging to the sides and under pieces of the armor, especially if you can see it from all angles like her arm bracers. And that's it. That's how you age armor. So for tracers, I specifically use the brown because that's what it looks like in the reference pictures that her is shaded to. I also used a dark gray to write the words as well as the top seam and then the bottom channel thing. I don't know what it is. I just use paint to create it. You can definitely go in with warbler or like cut out pieces of the foam to make it indented like it looks like it might be. But honestly, just using the paint photographed really well and all together, everything looks really, really nice. And really quick, I wanna go over wearing the bracers. So first off, as you can see, I added a extra strip of foam to the top piece, so it's double layered right here. That was to make sure that it fit on my arm correctly. I also labeled them right and left, so I put them on the right arms. <laughs> but as you can see, as I'm putting it on, the foam compresses around my arm, which makes the fit really, really nice, and that's how they're able to stay on all day without any hooks or Velcro or elastic. They just form fit to my arm. So you can see the foam compresses more on the inner part of my arm towards my body and on the outer part of my arm near my elbow I have a lot more extra space so that's where I needed to add the extra foam just to get it to be able to wear correctly. Now on to making her gloves. So the first thing I noticed about her gloves are that they are an unusual shape. There is more black than there is white and it has that nice little heart shape around her palm. So the first thing I did was just create a mock-up and I just put that on and used a marker to trace where I needed it to fit me correctly. I then cut that pattern up and made a new pattern with a white palm part and then a black upper hand part. Cut those pieces out of a black and a white spandex and then do that bug, get out of here bug! Ah! And then sew them together using a really small zigzag stitch so the glove will still stretch around your fingers without breaking the seams. Now your glove is complete, but it doesn't quite look like tracers because her palms are aged really, really definely. So what I did was I just took some acrylic paint, the same stuff I used to paint the armor, and I painted the gloves. Ah, lipstick! So I used very thin coats and very light washes and just started to paint the glove while wearing it. And to do the other hand, since I am not ambidextrous, I just put it on backwards and painted it as best I could on the top of my hand. Again, age the glove as you would armor. You want the darkest, dirtiest places to be in the crevices and you also just want to follow reference photos. All in all, the acrylic paint held up perfectly fine. It didn't crack or ruin my fabric at all. It bled through the underside a little bit, but no one ever saw that. I didn't care. They looked really, really cool. This was, this was a great finishing touch to pull the gloves together to the costume. All right, that is it for this portion of my Tracer tutorials. Don't forget to check out the other tutorials I have to complete the Tracer costume. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching. Bye! 
It's May! Ah, <laughs> snow princess! Paint! Paint! Bro! But no one ever notices, so it's fine.